Hello Habari, Wendy Water here and in this video I'll be checking out the old chaff mill retreats in the Fluru Peninsula in South Australia. I hope you enjoy this video. Three kilometers away from the old chaff mill, we have made it to Fluru. completely destroyed by a fire in the 90s you said in 1919 1919 19 oh so this is still the same building this structure from 1919 yes and it was a tragedy because it had been a thriving thriving mill grinding up wheat and straw and interestingly underneath that table um oh yes there's a um a peephole into the building's past Oh. We had to excavate all the floors, and when we did, uh, all of these artifacts came up out of the soil. And so we preserved them and put them back here so that you can have breakfast and dinner over them. Um, there's 150 year old hand forged nails and proprietary tools um, made in the blacksmith's forge on the property. Oh, wow. um, and, um, and a Dutch footing, which was part of the original structure of the floor. And another interesting curiosity is this here. Um, she looks like a skill. Uh, <laughs> we thought the 72 meant 1872 when the building was built. But we had a heritage carpenter come here and he said, no, that dot there means it's 72 feet. And all of these strokes is how many roof struts there are. The whole walls are a scratch pad. Uh, of building measurements and things like that ah. to keep everybody um, abreast of where they were when they were building. Ah. This here is the old chute. It looks like a trap door. It's, it is almost, except a vertical one. You're kind of right. Yeah. Um, if you, they used to slide, put a bag there on a hoop, open this. Oh, wow. it's a pantry pour. now. Yes, wow. it is. <laughs> all the grain poured past the British Imperial Oil Company. Ah. It's covered in writing. The writing's 100 plus years old. We're an organic biodynamic property. You drive up our vineyard, that's an organic biodynamic Shiraz vineyard. Mm -hmm. And there's olive trees at the end of it, and that's our olive oil. And then there's a selection of muesli and coffee and tea and snacks. Nice. Um, and um, this is our wine off our vineyard. Oh, wow. So um, this is Shiraz, um, mm -hmm. and we, uh, we sell our grapes to a marvellous organic winery called Gem Tree, which mm -hmm. is why we've always got their brochure there. And they put that into their very high-end Ernest Allen stuff. That, 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 the Ernest Allen wine's lovely, and uh, then we buy it back before it's blended, so you can have it on its own. Mm. How did you come onto this property and to no. owning this house? Is it a family, no. passed down through no. family? We were we were Melbourneites, and we, we fell in love with the Fleurier Peninsula, mm -hmm. and we were looking for a sea change, and we couldn't afford one around Melbourne. But um, an hour south of Adelaide, we discovered this place, and it's like one of the world's best... So that's you and Bernice? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and, um, and so Bernice and I thought, oh gosh, well, we traded our 10 by 30 metre block in the inner west of Melbourne mm. for, you know, this seven and a half acres here. Mm. Um, and um, there's... Oh, seven and a half acres. Good trade. It was. Good trade. There's 50 almond trees out there. Does that include where you grow the wine as well, the seven acres? Yes. The vineyard. So half of the property is vineyard and the other half is the rest of of the place. <laughs> when did you come here? 2006. Oh, 2006. It took eight years to start renovating the chaff mill. Uh -huh. I had to go and produce a few TV shows. I yeah. produced City Homicide. I show ran a television soap called Neighbours. I watched um, Neighbours in Kenya. Ah, <laughs> so I ran that show for a few years. Uh -huh. I also directed it and Bernice and I met on the set. Oh, you directed Neighbours? Yes. Wow. Neighbors. Bernice was a young 
very wow. attractive costumier on the show. Ah. And uh, like the song from the theme tune goes, when so good neighbours become Neighbors. good friends. <laughs> <laughs> we were just singing this. Almost everyone in Australia, I reckon everyone could sing the neighbours song. Just about. <laughs> even even everyone in Kenya could sing yep. neighbours yeah, yeah. theme song, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. It's it crossed <laughs> wow. borders. Okay. I directed most of the popular dramas, and, mm. um, so anyway, I needed to go do quite a lot of work before we could start on this place. We naively thought, oh yeah, we could do this place up for cheap and live in it. Mm. You can do it up, but not for cheap. So when you came in, it was just a structure that was there, what you showed us in the picture. Yes, that, uh, was, that was what was here. Yeah. Um, and it was a barren wasteland with grass up to your shoulders, and um, so bit by bit we just started bringing the property back to life again mm. and it took a long time but mm. finally you got there. Mm. I think the message of that is that perseverance and holding true to a kind of original vision will get you there in the end. You just have to be bloody minded about it. Mm. <laughs> it's, I think it's partly a story about having a dream and holding it in front of you all the time. Mm. We had a dream for this place mm. um, and substantially what we dreamed is what became true. Mm. Um, but you have to go through a lot of tears along the way. Nothing worth doing comes too easy, it seems. Certainly in the arts, in film and television. Mm. There's a thousand reasons to say no to something and only one or two reasons to say yes. Mm. But you go to one or two reasons. That's it, that's it. That's how you get those incredible, that incredible sense of achievement and that satisfaction when you go through something hard to achieve something great. Yes. So we're getting a complimentary platter to kind of nibble on and this is what we have going on. Personality and everything brings me to my knees. Having cheese and crackers now with some queens added on top. <laughs> oh, they've got snacks in there of twisties and chips. We could try that. I haven't tried twisties yet. This is apparently like a quintessential. Oh, you haven't had twisties yet. It's a quintessential. That is you know what? Snack. Shame on me. Shame on you, actually. Shame on me for not showing you twisties. Wow. You know what? It's coming right up. If you wrote me off right now, I would understand. I'll be like, that's it. I have to go back. Based to on my it. lack of twisty etiquette. I'll be like, that's it. I'm going back to get someone from Nairobi. Look at that. <laughs> but then you make a mean, a mean Kim's cracker cheese thing. Look at this. So poems should be written about this. You said this is a cracker whopper. This is a cracker whopper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys know Harold Balder. This guy is obsessed with Harold Balder. All I hear throughout the day is Harold Balder impressions. And thing is, like usually I know what to say to get you going. <laughs> because if I say whopper. I just know it's coming, like you can't help it. You gotta say it in the nor no from Norway. I really like the taste of this. And usually I'm someone who doesn't like when people add sweetness to something that's meant to be salty. But this it does work, just works. I love it when they do that. I don't know if we can be friends anymore. I think that's it, that's the end of this relationship. <laughs> I'll go DM Harold Balder now. <laughs> I'm like suddenly I became available. Amazing. Barbecue shapes, twisties. Road trip essentials if you're Australian. <laughs> she, when she tasted the barbecue shapes, it was like. Bites were chopping in the background. <laughs> <laughs> a butterfly, two of butterflies encircled her. And um, from that point on. And Michael Bublé was singing, you know? Mm. It was beautiful. And my life was changed. <laughs> it really was. I could sense it was like, wow, this girl is reacting. Transformative. To the barbecue shapes. Some people go to Bali to do meditation retreats. I just come to Adelaide and have barbecue shapes from Coles. <laughs> Followed by a chaser. Twisties. And alpacas. I don't know why that's so funny. I can't believe we're eating alpacas. Right? We're eating alpaca. I just saw alpacas for the first time because I don't have alpacas in East Africa. And now I'm eating one. I didn't even know I didn't know it was on offer. <laughs> So the Fluria Peninsula is the home of beautiful, beautiful beaches and one such beach is called Selix Beach which is a very close to the old Chuck Mill where we're staying. So we're going to check out Selix Beach, do some beautiful drone footage 
I love that area. Wow, look at these beautiful beach houses along the road. And they're overlooking the beach, which looks incredible, my goodness. So what are you nervous about? I'm nervous about the fact that in a contained, self-contained like yard, uh -huh. you were struggling um, with the drone. Here we are at the edge of a cliff um, with much stronger winds and an ocean. And I just feel like there is a higher chance that you are going to crash and lose your drone. And on that note, let us fly this drone. Because <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you, <laughs> This looks like the end of the Truman Show's boundary. If you've seen the Truman Show, this looks like where the Truman's trying to get to. <laughs> wow. I love how along the beaches they have these little benches that you can come and sit on like if you had a picnic or wine or whatever you can just come and sit here and then so they have various lookout points along the edge of the water so that makes it easier to come and just chill you know Aldinga. like i said the way it's written Aldinga. and you guys don't do that we say or or dinga but it's A L. Right. How is that O I mean, We don't always pronounce it the way it's spelled. Interesting, us yeah. Aussies. So it's really beautiful. Like when you're standing out there, the water is blue, the cliffs are brown, the greenery is greening. <laughs> it's doing what it's supposed to do. Like the scene is just postcard ready. But the thing that takes you by surprise is the cold that wind just whipping your skin which is interesting because it's such a beautiful sunny day outside like even being in the car right now looking out it is deceiving you stand out there and the wind is like you want to pull out a jumper but you're on the beach which is peculiar for me because our beaches are generally very warm yeah our beaches generally are a bit cooler um, mm. than inland um, because of the breeze that you get and it, it's generally a bit cooler however as we move into summer it will become it won't be as cold even with the breeze if anything it'll be a sweet sweet relief we're literally the... in the middle of summer already what you talking about oh, what you talking about right Willis? right at the beginning right what are, you talking about Willis? Actually, what are we what are we uh, we're right in the middle week. of we're, summer we're less than a week into summer it's already considerably warmer than it was when i got here and everyone keeps saying right? how hot it is and get this it's gonna get even hotter you <laughs> just wait all you gotta okay. do is and by the way if you're wondering back at home you're thinking but what would it be like to be in an australian summer all you need to do is preheat your oven to whatever the maximum temperature is <laughs> just turn it all the way up let it let it go for about half an hour really preheat it and then just open the door and just let it waft over you and go, wow, like that's, I'm in Australia right now. Mommy, it's over. Do you know that cartoon? So it's time to leave. I really enjoyed staying at the old chef mill. I think you should definitely come down if you're looking to explore the Fluvio Peninsula. So next stop, we're going to Kangaroo Island tomorrow. And I actually thought, um, I would make it back to Adelaide, you know, and then go to KI tomorrow, but it just doesn't seem like it's gonna happen Because the ferry leaves at 6 30 a.m. Tomorrow, so it's not gonna happen at all The plan is stay at a motel that's nearby. That was like a last-minute booking and Spend the night there off to KI tomorrow So I will probably see you in KI, but if the next place is exciting, I will definitely show you that as well. So bye